I'm Kay Smith and welcome to Outlier, where we share inspiring stories of ordinary people doing extraordinary things outside of their comfort zone in a bid to help other outliers and entrepreneurs do the same. In today's episode, Andrew and I will be discussing the key takeaways from Joe Don's Outlier episode that we released last week, and we'll be doing a meditation on the power of overcoming resistance and becoming more adaptable. Hi, Andrew. How are you today? Good. Thanks, Kay. Great to be here as always. Yes, I'm really looking forward to this one. I mean, I look forward to all of them, but this one's going to be great, especially the meditation. Yeah, well, it's going to be a short one today, Kay. It's um, obviously, I mean, if you haven't watched the episode, you can watch it here, but it's the tale of Joe Don and, and Fiji's uh, only livable dive yacht, charter yacht, which is uh, I got the privilege of going on and obviously filming the episode. But effectively, starting out in an outlier coastal town in England, Joe Don has always had the water in his blood. And with a successful pilgrimage to the southern antipodes of Australia, it wasn't long before Joe was soon the head dive instructor at the Manta Ray Island Resort in the Yasawa group of islands in Fiji, which again, we also did an episode on Manta Ray Island Resort uh, the week in the two weeks prior to Joe's episode, uh, which you can watch that here as well. Fast forward to today, and Joe now co-owns one of Fiji's only livable dive yacht chart, like livable dive charter yachts, and spends his entire life either on the water or under the water, showing other outliers how to live the dream. Yeah, great. I mean, all these episodes are amazing, but the, this one in Fiji, the the visuals are so beautiful, and just to watch and to see how somebody from the UK ends up on a dive yacht in Fiji Islands above. A and below the water so how, how does that happen well it's a really good question and obviously all our branding is related to the sacred islands where we filmed the episode with joe um and you know a guy from england ends up in 50 where we filmed it was 50 50 mile up from um from nandy in the middle of the pacific ocean right on a, a deserted island at sacred islands was the birthplace of fiji and I guess the, the biggest thing, Joe, he didn't, he wasn't an overnight success. You know, it wasn't like he just owned a yacht and, and all of a sudden he's running dive charters. Uh, and he talked about it a lot. It's like it, it was a 12 year journey of, of a lot of ups and downs um, working for other people, as well as the partners in the business working for others, I guess, garnering their knowledge uh, to eventually provide such a first class product. But you know, we took what well, he talks about the um, the power of experience built over time versus starting fresh. So, you know, it, it, it wouldn't have been possible for him to start that business straight away because he wouldn't have had the experience, he wouldn't have had the knowledge, he wouldn't have had the connections, he wouldn't have understood what to do if certain things happened, he wouldn't have understood how to put a product together that they now have. So, that was a huge learning, and obviously, it applies to all the outliers and entrepreneurs out there. Um, he also talks about how having to go through the good and the bad to realize what you want to create. So for a lot of outliers and entrepreneurs, they get deterred or put off by the good and the bad, or well, not the good so much, but the bad or the adversity. But what he was finding, it was a great way for him to learn what he didn't want in his product. So it's a really good point for the outliers and entrepreneurs out there. Be persistent and just take it as learning as opposed to, you know, for some people it's failure or, you know, they just don't want to do it anymore. Again, he just looked at it as constant, ongoing learning and improving that then he could launch the product with that experience and then take it into the market. So a really short point there, Kay, but a very powerful one. Because as I said, a lot of outliers and entrepreneurs under the first few signs of resistance, they pull the pin and they're gone, right? So again, we talk about it a lot being... Um, passion driven but this is almost the opposite it's saying firstly it's obviously important to be passionate but then if you do um, experience resistance which we're going to do a meditation shortly there is a learning or a lesson in that or a diamond in the rough to be taken out of it not just to stop and pull the pin and and, and get away from it yeah and it's reminding me a little bit about um, like Nathan Farley, for example. Um, you know, when you're looking at sports and athletes, and you'll know about this as well, you know, when you when 
new resistance. If you want to be a world-class athlete, it's not going to be plain sailing. You're going to have resistance. You're going to have challenges. You've got to, you've got to put the work in. You've got to do the competitions. You've got to build yourself up to be, to be the, the best you can be in your field. And that really applies to business as well. Yeah. I, I, the analogy I use there, I think is a great analogy is you, when you go to the gym, it feels hard. And the gains aren't made at the gym. They're actually made in the rest. But if you didn't push yourself hard at the gym, in the rest, there would be no growth or gains because it's in the damaging of the muscles that then needs repaired, that repairs slightly stronger than what they were like before you went to the gym, then you get the growth. So I see that with entrepreneurs as well. We need the resistance. We need the headwinds. In Joe's case, you know, with sailing, if we use that analogy, we'll, and we will use that shortly, we need the headwind to, to actually get us to take to make progress to our destination. Mm. And also, that, and it's not just a, a solo thing as well, is it? There's a, you know, you also need the people around you to help. Yeah, well, luckily for Joe, he has his partner, um, um, Laura. Laura Kay is her name, so similar to yours, Kay. Uh, and another friend, one of his best mates, they're all part of the business together. And they all bring together their complementary roles. Now, he talks about this, that they don't necessarily have defined roles because everyone needs to know everything about the whole business. But once they're clear on that they know all of those things, then they split off into their roles. So if you're creating a business that needs a team, we use a profiling tool, which we've talked about multiple times, that helps you identify your um, ideal profile and how you should operate and then the, the team members that you need within that. Um, but it's highly important because you don't want everyone doing the same thing. Obviously, you're going to get a lot more leverage if everyone else is doing something slightly different. So preferably in your strengths as well. Again, a really short but a very powerful uh, point in relation to growth as a business. The other thing that Joe mentions in relation to that, Kay, is he like the biggest form of resistance he found was at the start of the business and the setup phase. And that it's really interesting because as I was hearing him talk about that, I'm thinking, how's that hard? Because to me, that's the easiest part, but it's clearly not his profile or his, his ideal flow. Um, but what he did mention is that once everyone had been there, done that, and obviously gone through what they had to get through, e.g. the resistance of the startup process, they systemized it which created structure and procedures that now they just follow as opposed to guessing what's happening every time. So again, if we look at team and then we look at, you obviously got to learn in the early days. And then if you're looking to adapt and improve, then that then helps create a structure that works and then putting procedures in place that's going to help anyone else that comes on board as well as the existing team members to know what's the best way to do things at any given moment. And I guess also, yeah, when you're on a boat and you're in a sailing situation, like you need to know what to do in, I'm not saying emergency, but let's say the weather turns bad or anything, you need to be able to have the processes and everything to take care of the guests on board, what, you know, where you may, what islands you need to go to, to protect yourself from the winds. Like you really need to have that structure and process in place to know exactly what to do to keep your business alive because you don't want to put your customers off because you're running around like headless chickens not knowing what you're doing. Yeah, it's like sailing is a great analogy again. It's like the systems or structures and process gives clarity to the chaos. So when things are chaotic, you can revert back to your systems. Oh, that's what we do under this situation and, uh, and then just follow that system. And it's funny, you know, like me talking about this, it feels boring, right? Like it, it feels like, you know, you want to start a business on passion and having fun and everything else. And that stuff feels boring, but it's actually like putting a solid um, foundation under a house. Structures and procedures are, and systems are highly important because if you don't have them, then the house itself is just going to fall down because there's no um, strong structure there. Mm, that makes that makes a lot of sense, and I really like this uh, sailing analogy because part of the part of the interview, uh, Joe mentions that they got the boat from was it Indonesia, and they had to sail it all the way to Fiji, and it took them months, and all the all the resistance and adaptability they had to go through to get to get to their destination. 
Yeah, well, obviously that it was an interesting trip, right? He had his, his father and a friend bring it out of Indonesia. They had to come down to Darwin, but they left by gunpoint in Indonesia and he wouldn't talk too much about it. But then they got arrested in Darwin. Then they had to head back up to Thursday Island and up to Papua New Guinea, across to um, Solomon Islands, down to Vanuatu and out to Fiji. A four-month process, massive waves coming in. You know, it wasn't a simple process, but as we've always talked about, the, the power of fun and the power of passion, which is our third point for today, is if you can build your business, and we've said it countless times, haven't we, Kay, around your passion and making sure it's fun, then as Joe says, you'll never work a day in your life. So as always, build a, passion, a business around your passion and what your idea of fun is, and you're going to last a lot longer, and it's also going to help you overcome the hurdles that come up along the way. Yeah, I guess they now look back at that journey and that trip with some fondness now, even at the gunpoint part and, you know, the waves, you always can look back as well. It might not might not always seem fun on the, at the time as well, but when you look back on it, it's part of the journey and that also makes it enjoyable to re review on. Yeah, well, I guess uh, Joe talks about it, you know, it's like the, the adversity is where the learnings come from. So to not want to have those in your business, and to not think it's not going to be hard is just crazy. If you think it's, and excuse the pun, if you think it's going to be smooth sailing, then that's just madness. And if you look at sailing as an analogy for adaptability, and, and the best analogy here is if you're sailing upwind, you have to tack across the wind. So if the wind's coming at you, you have to tack across it to make micro gains, and then you have to tack back. So you're zigzagging up and down, and, and it looks like you haven't gone a long distance, but you can't sail directly into the wind. So you have to be adaptable by going sideways with a slight angle and then up. And obviously, as well as the wind, you've got tides against you. Uh, you might have the weather against you. You might have crewmate, you know, crewmates against you. You might have seasickness, all these different things that come into it. But a perfect analogy for business, K, for entrepreneurs, for young outliers out there, that you know, we, I guess when we do these interviews, it looks like these guys just were successful overnight. But the reality is they're, they're 12, 15, 20 year overnight success stories. And every one of them just persevered and adapted and learned and improved along the journey, which then eventually makes them successful. So if you're, especially for young outliers out there, and I know this in, in where I live in Sydney uh, on the Northern Beaches, there's a, there's a suburb in the Northern Beaches, and this sounds a bit gory, very wealthy suburb, but it has the highest suicide rate with young teenagers. The reason is because they think, unless they're a professional athlete or a rock star overnight, then they're a failure, right? Because they see a lot of success around them, a lot of wealthy people, uh, a lot of famous people, and they think it somehow it just happens. You just are famous. You just are wealthy. You just are successful. And so when they realize, oh, you mean this is going to take some work, a lot of them choose the option of checking out rather than checking in and really gutsing it out and learning to have some resilience and adaptability. So, again, Joe, his story, biggest summary for me, some great key points there. You obviously get paid to learn before starting a business. It's a great way to... Um, I guess, have others paying you to, to get your education so you're not you know, losing all your money. The power of team and making sure they're in complementary roles and the importance of structure and procedures once you're clear on those roles. The power of fun and, as always, passion. And then, as we talked about, using sailing as an analogy for adaptability. But when I asked, this is interesting, Kay, from a summary perspective, when I asked Joe about what advice would he give his younger self um, and he said, I wouldn't give him any advice because I prefer that he being his younger self and others adapt and learn as they go, because if he gives the advice, then they're not learning it right to know and not to do to do to know and not to do is still yet not to know. So you have to go through it in order to understand it. But if someone's just handing it to you, like the guys in the suburb I was talking to you about then it's not appreciated, it's not valued, and it can often be, um, yeah, lead to a downward spiral. So, again, 
he talks about uh, with the sailing and also with career counselors at school with the young outliers. They really, you know, they talk about, oh, you could be a lawyer or an accountant or an engineer. Or in my case, when I was at school in, in, uh, in the 90s, my option, because I love fitness and personal development and stuff at that age, they said, oh, maybe you could go in the army, right? Which back then was kind of cool because I could have been a PT instructor, et cetera. But it didn't fit my values of war. So what was interesting about Joe, he said, um, no one ever mentions about living the dream from a career counselor perspective. Um, so he, what he mentioned in relation to that was rather than listen to advice from people potentially who also don't really have a background to be giving you that advice is better, even better is to surround yourself with people living the dream and encouraging others to do the same. Um, and he, and then the biggest point he put forth was it's better to be lying on your deathbed, knowing you've given it a crack with no regrets than saying, I wish I did it. So I know that again, a very, very simple statement, but extremely powerful. Give it a go, guys. Take action. Who knows what will happen? But at worst case, what's the worst that can happen? You'll learn, you'll improve, you'll grow, and you can decide to continue or go off in a different direction. So that's pretty much a summary for me, Kay, of, of Joe's uh, episode. As always, we're going we're gonna to do a meditation. Um, if you want to watch the episode, you, the link uh, we'll put below, as well as I mentioned it earlier. And um, yeah, let's get into this meditation, hey? Let's do it. I just want to make one point. I'm, it's really sad to hear about the, the kids that, you know, they, they feel that they don't have the opportunities when actually they've got so much more opportunity than a lot of other children have. It's, uh, it's quite sad to hear that. It's a really important one, right? So I look at it and go, are you crazy? They've got everything. These, and we live in paradise. Um, we live in one of the wealthiest places in the world and their parents have a lot of money. So they have all the opportunities in the world, but it's like they literally can't see it because they're not willing to delve in, internally. They'd rather look externally and go, I don't match up to that. Therefore, I'm not good enough or whatever goes through their mind and they choose to check out. It's just madness. To me, it's absolutely crazy. But that's society nowadays, right? And especially in the Western world. Yeah, really, really is. So I'm very much looking forward to doing this meditation with you um, about the resistance. So shall we get started on that? Yeah, so I guess a, a good prelude to that as the young outliers is for the last two sessions, guys, we've talked about the power of passion and the power of vision when it comes to starting your business. But often what happens, and Kay's a good example, and we'll, we'll use Kay again as an analogy for this. The first session, Kay, what her insight was telling her is to get out there and be around more people. That was the passion element because she loves being around people. The second part, which was in last week's uh, podcast, was about vision. And she had this vision on a beach of just completing a workshop with many, many happy people, and so that was that, right? So everyone can come up with their passion. They can come up with their vision. And then as they start taking action, often the resistance comes up. Now, the resistance is just negative thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and emotions that come up sometimes to sabotage you or sometimes to guide you. So, Kay, we've talked about this multiple times. The three philosophies we have at Outlier are your external reality, be that your physical body and your physical environment are a reflection of your internal reality. So if you want to change anything externally, it starts on the inside. And the internal reality are your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs, which then create the behaviors that create the external reality. So that's the first one. The second philosophy is that your, old, your ideal reality already exists. And the reality is it does from a quantum physics perspective. So the fastest way to get to your ideal reality is to resonate with it now. And we talked about that last week. The quickest way to do that is feel the feelings associated with your ideal reality as often as you can. And the more you feel them, the more you start to resonate with your ideal reality. Then our third philosophy is feeling is healing. And the reason we have feeling is healing is because of this resistance that comes up. 
So what typically happens with people is they start off on this journey, they're all passionate. And there's a, I use this analogy for a famous personal development guru. People go to his workshops, get all pumped up for two weeks and then crash and burn. And then they blame his workshop. Yeah, oh, it was just like a cult or a hoax. It's not about that. What it actually is, is as we take action towards our ideal reality, we bring up that negative, those negative thoughts, feelings, and beliefs that are counterintuitive or, or um, counter realities to our ideal reality. So the philosophy we have at Outlier is feeling is healing. Feelings just want to be felt and they have a message for us. And the, they are actually trying to help us. And in that message is the, is the wisdom on what is needed to take or the next step needed to take in order to get to where we want to go, our ideal vision. But what happens because they often feel really heavy and depressing or sad or, or frustrating or whatever, it's so much easier just to stop. And that just happens to so many entrepreneurs. But what we're going to do, Kay, is if, if you don't mind, I'm going to use you as an analogy. We talked about last session in your vision, one of the things that you needed to do to more of was more fitness in order to achieve your vision. So how's that been going for you? Interestingly enough, Andrew, there's been resistance. So I mentioned uh, last, last time that there was a, uh, an, an accident and an injury. And so that's kind of got me out of my levels of fitness and my routine of fitness for a while. And so there is resistance in me starting it up again because I'm not as fit as I was. And I'm, you know, I'm a bit like concerned about my body moving. And so, yeah, there's, there's been a lot of resistance. Okay, cool. So what we do with our process, Kay, is I want you to, if you were to give me in one sentence, what you feel is the highest priority resistance right now and describe it, what would it be? So, just so in terms of my life? In terms to, of my life or from what we're talking about? Well, just in terms to, you've already identified that fitness is some resistance. So you've got it in relation to fitness. So let's start there. So how would you just give it one sentence, give it a sentence and name it. What, what's that? What would you call that? Okay. Um, oh, it's hard to figure it out. It just, it just feels like I don't know where to start and I don't know what's most effective. It just okay. feels that, yeah, I don't know what to do. Awesome. So there we go. Let's, you've named it. I don't know what to do in relation to my fitness, right? So as always, I want you to close your eyes. And for the viewer's sake, we close our eyes so we go internal, so we can start listening to what's going on. And Kay, we're going to take the deep breaths for the rest of the time that we're going to do this process. And the reason we do that is to help you relax and tune into your subconscious. So I want you to take a couple of deep breaths for me and I want you to tune into this. I don't know what to do with my fitness. It will either be in your body, it'll be in the room or it'll be outside of the room. Where is it? It feels like it's outside the room. Cool. So what color is it? A murky, dark gray color. Yeah, what shape? It feels like a fluid color, so it's just all over. Yeah. What size? Large. And you'll know what large means to you, right? It's applicable to everyone. And uh, temperature? Cold. And texture? Liquid, wet. Cool. So I want you to put all your attention outside of the room. And I want you to breathe into it for me. So visualize that your breath's going outside of the room. And to the viewers, this won't make a lot of sense until you do this process. But to Kay, it means uh, it definitely makes sense. Now, Kay, what's the emotion associated with this murky, liquid, yucky, gray feeling that's going on out there? Fear, apprehension. Perfect. So I want you to feel more fear for me. And so if ten, on a scale of zero to 10, if 10 was the highest amount of fear you could feel, what would it be right now? I'd say it's around a five. Cool. So I want you to ramp it up, right? So 
this fear, so fear is a really interesting one, right? And it's, it's probably one of the highest forms of resistance for people, but fear is actually a protection feeling to stop us feeling another feeling. So let's just dive straight in. What's the feeling it's stopping you feeling? The first thing that comes to mind is stopping me feeling great. Cool. So here's the thing, right? This sounds crazy, but you had a, an accident, right? And that's what stopped your fitness. So prior to the accident, you were feeling pretty good. You were training and everything else. You have an accident and now it's creating fear and apprehension, but it's creating fear and apprehension to stop you feeling great. Tell us about that. That'll mean something to you. So last time something when I felt great, something bad happened and we know what it was or it could be something else, but what was it, Kay? I think it's, when, I, when I start to feel great, then something happens and knocks me back again. And how does it make you feel? Disappointed. Yeah. De deflated. Deflated. Perfect. So can you see how... Fitness makes you feel great, but every time you feel great, something bad happens to make me feel disappointed. Does, does that make sense to you? It does make sense. So therefore, why would you get back into fitness if it's going to make you feel great temporarily, but then disappointed? Do you understand how that works? It's, it's actually trying to protect you. So it stops you from doing fitness. It's amazing. So it's crazy, right? Like on paper, that's crazy. But internally, it's 100% how it works for you, right? So here's how we clear it. We go straight to the feeling we don't want to feel. Now, is that feeling disappointed? Or something else? Mm. Disappointed, I think deflated and disappointed are the same. So that kind of, I don't know if I'm putting the right words, but it just feels like, oh, again, you know, this kind of, yeah, disappointed, I think, is a good word. It, it, I feel my intuition saying, is it like a resignation of, oh, God, here we go again. I felt great, now I feel bad, and, geez, I don't want to feel this anymore. So exactly, you just resign yeah. to it. It's like, oh, God, now that's just my lot in life. Yes, I guess so. Yeah, so where do you feel this disappointment, deflated? In my chest. Perfect. So, again, for the viewer's sake, all your attention goes there. Nice deep breaths into that area. And all I want you to do, Kay, is feel disappointed because this is a feeling you don't want to feel. So you've resisted feeling it by not going to the gym, not feeling or not doing your fitness. Right? So if you're okay and comfortable feeling disappointed or deflated, then there's nothing to resist anymore because you're okay feeling it. Does that make sense? It really makes sense. Yeah, so you don't have to push it away anymore. It's not something to be feared or not wanted to be felt. So just turn your attention on it and feel it and just sit in it for me. And honestly, it'll go for 20 seconds, 30 seconds of that. Can you feel it? I can, yes. Okay, bring it on even more. And here's the beauty of all of this. I talked about earlier, feeling is healing. Feelings just want to be felt and they're trying to help us. So disappointed and deflated are actually trying to help you. So let's ask them, what are they trying to help me with? Let, give them a voice and let them talk. It's what we spoke about, really. It's just that stopping me feeling a failure. Bingo. So you've changed to a different feeling, right? So where does failure hang out? In my stomach area. Yeah. So attention in the stomach. I, again, I want you to feel like a failure. And feel, I know you don't want to. Contra, contra, contradictory uh, process we're doing here you know the power of positive thinking in that this isn't that right this is the opposite we want to encourage you to feel failure because you've been resisting it right i don't want to go and do my fitness because i don't want to feel like a failure 
well, let's just feel like a failure so there's no more needing to resist it. And again, failure has wisdom for you, Kay. It's quite nauseating, actually. Oh, awesome. Even better. It means it's moving. It's got some wisdom for you, too. What, did, what does it want to say? In my mind, I just feel it's the words that actually it's okay. Like it's okay to try, trying it. And I always have this analogy, like this phrase. It's interesting. I always have this phrase that we fail forward to success. And I use this a lot, but I'm not following it right now. Again, the sailing analogy, right? As we tack across the wind, we're really failing against the wind, aren't we? But we're making micro improvements into the wind. Then we tack. This is us, okay? We feel the failure. And we change, we adapt and go the other way, back up wind. So just feel failure, acknowledge it, embrace it. It's not something to be resisted because it has wisdom for you. It's trying to help you. So then it comes that then there's the fear of success on the back of that. Which is always I'm not case. failing, I'm successful. Yeah. And what's wrong with that? So that's that feeling great again, right? What happens when you feel great? I get disappointed. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a backwards uh, back and forward battle, right? Again, like tacking into the wind. So feel the fear of success. So you don't even have to feel the fear of it because the fear of success is just fearing, feeling the feeling of success. So I want you to just feel success for me. And no, it's not an uncomfortable feeling. Where is success to you and your body outside your body or outside of the room? Outside of my body. Yeah. So just feel it. Take a nice deep breath into it. And again, it's got wisdom for you too. So, okay, I want you to keep feeling it. But for the viewer's sake, guys, this might sound counterintuitive, but all we're trying to do is feel the feelings that come up and very quickly they'll dissipate and they shift into another feeling and then ultimate wisdom sits underneath all of them. So for Kay's sake, for the sake of this recording sake, we might cut it a bit shorter than normal. Usually our sessions can go up to an hour. But Kay, both failure and success have a message for you. Do you want to, first things first though, do you want to be successful? Yes. Do you want to be a failure? No. Cool. So then we, our alignment is in, the, in the relation to success. So we're going to ask success, and I want you to keep feeling it as much as you can. And when you feel ready, I want you to answer this question for me, okay? What is the next thing I need to do in order for me to be a success? And it would say. Love myself more. Okay, say it again. To love myself more. Okay, say it again for your sake. To love myself more. Yeah, and then I'm going to ask you the next question. You give me the first thing that comes to mind. In order to love myself more, I need to do. The word that's coming to my mind is acceptance, not oh, really an action. Yeah, so again, it's a feeling, right? So I just want you to feel acceptance right now. Fastest way to feel accepted is to feel acceptance right now or accepted right now. And is that by others or by yourself? You need to feel acceptance. By myself. Yeah, cool. So where does acceptance hang out in your body, in the room, outside of the room? Uh, in my head, actually. Yeah, so breathe into your head and just feel acceptance. Bask in it. Okay, and in order for me to feel acceptance, the next thing I need to do is what? Just 
get out there and do it. Go out of my comfort zone and go and do a yoga class. There we go. Say it again. This is the homework. To get out of my comfort zone, to get out there and do it and go and take a yoga class. Okay, I mentioned before to know and not to do is still yet not to know. So if you don't go to yoga, A, you're dishonoring these parts of you that are trying to help you, but you're also then not getting the full understanding of what they're trying to help you with, right? Which is therefore you won't get full acceptance. Does that make sense? Yes. So it sounds crazy, right? We started the process with, I don't know what to do, in relation to my fitness and it brought up fear and resistance around every time I feel great something bad happens and I feel disappointed and deflated which then led to me feeling like a failure but as we went through all of these spectrum of feelings the wisdom came up of go and do yoga now to an outsider who's hearing that Kay has resistance to her fitness they just go, oh, why don't you just get into it? But it's not just a simple case of getting into it when you're carrying all those feelings, right? You feel heavy or sluggish or tired or whatever, right? But the funny thing is, on the flip side, it is that simple. Just go and do it. You'll feel really good. And then you'll, you'll want to do it more and more. So what, what are your thoughts on that, Kay? Yeah, exactly what you said. And I can, and I, I like, I guess I beat myself up internally about that too, because I used to be a gym rat. Like I was always fitness. So I, I ran fitness classes for a while as well. You know, I was always been into fitness. So for me, not doing fitness is very strange. And that's where the internal of not loving myself enough, not accepting myself enough, fe feeling like a failure because I'm just not doing it. And this resistance is making me feel like, what's wrong with me? Like, why can't I not just do that? Like the people would think, just go and do it. But yeah, it doesn't it doesn't feel that simple when you're in that in that grip of the the mind and the body and the ego protecting myself. Yeah, but your wisdom, your internal wisdom, is saying it is that simple, isn't it? You just got to go to yoga. Trust me, I will show you by you going there. You'll feel good. You'll want to keep going back, and you're on your way to success. So. If, again, if we use the analogy of tacking into the wind as a yachtsman or a, or a sailor, well, you've got two options, right? You can go, oh, it's too hard going into the wind. I'm just going to give up, turn downwind and go away from the direction that I really want to go, right, which is what most people do. Or you persevere, you feel the feelings and you go, how can I change this? You tack, in your case, tacking is going to yoga, and that will bring up its own whatever comes up. And then you'll go through that and then you'll tack back the other way. But over time, say 10, 20 yoga sessions, you're going to be a lot further ahead than where you are in right now and feeling a hell of a lot better and realizing in the feeling a hell of a lot better that bad things don't always happen in the feeling a lot better, right? That was just a belief based out of past reference. It's not the truth, but it started to become a belief for Kay. So how does she break the belief? By going to yoga and continuing to honor that part of her who says that is the solution for me. So again, okay, if we look at your business success journey that you've been on for the last three podcasts, first thing was passion, getting out into the world. Second was you saw your vision. So identifying it, writing it down, et cetera. But part of that, the action was to get back into your fitness. Now we're at the case, and we'll talk about this next podcast, is how did it go? And if it, you didn't go, it just means more resistance has come up. So I talk about the analogy of, and it's an old analogy now, because in the old days, you used to have CD racks, right? Where um, a CD, uh, for those young outliers, they probably don't know because they've got you know MP3s or they've got their um, Spotify or whatever, but it used to be you had to buy the album and it would sit in a tower and there'd be a whole slots for the CDs to go in. And so the analogy I use is we've just, the resistance is we've pulled out the first layer, but sometimes the other CDs move their way up one position to be dealt with next. Because your subconscious will always give you the highest priority to be dealt with first. And in this case, it's your fitness, but you may find there's other things underneath that. Sometimes there's not, you'll just get on with it into the yoga and all of a sudden move forward to success. 
But if you feel that you don't go to yoga by next time we talk, it just means there's other resistance there that we can use the same process on to clear that as well. Um, so what's the takeaway, Kay? If you were to, like, the one key learning that you took out of today, what would it be? Pretty much summing up what you've said, and um, I don't know if it's been one key learning, I'm just going to elaborate, elaborate a little bit, is that what's been interesting is the whole journey that we've gone through on these last three podcasts, how it's e e evolved and it really matches what you've just said, that it started with the vision, it started with the passion, it started with the fitness, and it started with, now it's gone to the resistance. So... My, my takeaway is that the more I do these meditations and the more these things come up, the more deeper I go and more the, the more on my journey that I also follow as well. So just for me, it's the, the importance of doing this work and to going inside and to going into my feelings and to feeling my feelings and then yeah, working with you in this way to then go, okay, these are the actions I need to take. Yeah, it's awesome. So one thing that's coming to me out of that is most people don't want to feel it. They don't want to talk to people about it, right? They just think something's wrong with me, as you mentioned, or you start to think that. And so people start to introvert and hide away and disconnect. But that's just slowing down your success, right? Because eventually you'll get that frustrated with disconnecting that you come back out again because you just want to connect. So to alleviate that, we talk about it. Feeling is healing, so just feel the feelings as quickly as you can and the insights come out and all of a sudden you're back on track to your success. And I'm talking to the viewers here just as much as I am to you, Kay. When you suppress all of this with drinking, gambling, sex, work, uh, phone addictions, um, yeah, whatever else people use to stop feeling feelings, all you're doing is suppressing it and it will come out in multiple ways and it often comes out in cancers or it comes out in conflict with others. Um, it comes out in illness, sickness, injury. It comes out, right? So I use this analogy. When we bend a hose, right? The hose is going full bore. That's when we're in a fully expressed state. But if we bend the hose, right? It stops coming out at the, the, the nozzle, but what it does is it backs up to the tap and then the tap explodes. That's what this is like. So if we suppress it, it will eventually back up and explode somewhere else. And I'm going to use an even more crass analogy now. And this is no disregard to any religious people out there, but priests, when they abstain from a natural thing, right, called sex, right, over time, not all of them, but some of them do things that are, let's say, untoward to other people right? But if they hadn't abstained, would they have done those untoward things? I know it's crass, but it's, and it's harsh, but it raises the point, doesn't it? That when we suppress things that are, especially feelings, which are 100% natural, they've got to come out somewhere. So we might as well, instead of resist them, turn around and face them and just get them out there. And they always come with healing and they always come with wisdom and they always come with the perfect next step in order for us to be successful, whatever that means to us. Yeah, it's really powerful. And, and it's and I'm, we've done this work for a while, but even now I'm just getting that, that um, insight really. Like as soon as you have that feeling, you can just stop for a minute and just go, I have a feeling of fear or rejection or um, even love or happiness and just sit for just one minute and just go, let me feel that as much as possible. Like I say, rather than distracting or doing something else, it just takes a moment just to feel it and to embrace it and see what comes from it. And it can be a daily a practice throughout the day. Yeah. And I find too, and it's through thousands of my clients, but also of myself, is when you allow yourself to sit down and feel it, and sometimes you don't know what it's related to, right? But if you just tune into what the feeling is, you're, you notice your mind starts wandering about a certain thing or you just instantly go, no, oh, it's to do with X, Y, Z. So you, what I also love about feeling is it gives you clarity. And we talked about earlier, clarity in the chaos, right? So the chaos is the feelings or the negative thoughts and feelings that are going on. But tuning into them then gives you the clarity as to, oh, here's how I can get out of this chaos with clarity, with direction, and that's essentially what we do, Kay, isn't it, with our 
strategy sessions with all our coaching programs, with our meditation programs, is help you, the viewer, get clarity and direction out of chaos. And we help you tune into who you are. And when you do that, your internal self knows the right steps for you to take at any given moment to get you to where you want to go. So we talk about how we'll help you create a plan, but the reality is it's not us telling you what the plan is. It's help us guiding you internally to come up with a plan for yourself. So I guess that's a really good segue, Kay, to if anyone does want any help, they can go to our meditation programs, which uh, I'll put a link below here. The links are below there in all, all our podcasts. And if you want to take your business and or your life to a whole new level, then there's also a strategy session link there as well for you. So, Kay, just in summary for the viewers, um, one final learning or uh, take-home message that you'd like to share. From the whole of our whole podcast and for the last two weeks we've been dealing with Joe and, my, and what we just done with ourselves, I think really this, this power of resistance and overcoming obstacles and, and that adversity really pushes us forward to success and it's not nothing to be feared of and it's just our own our own selves getting in our own way and once we get out of our own way you know the world's are the ocean is is ours let's say yeah the world's our oyster right we can create whatever yeah. we want we just got to clear the path and, and and get out of the way and as i said earlier we know the way it's inside of us we know what we want it's and for those who don't you actually do when you tune in. And the key there, Kay, again, is just most people don't tune inward, right? They look outward. And we talk about our first philosophy. Your external reality is a reflection of your internal. But people are trying to get their internal reality by looking externally for reference. It's not where you get it. You get it inside of you. And therefore, if you want to create your ideal reality, which already exists, that's our second philosophy, Go inward. Don't go outward because outward you're reacting to everything outside of you, which is out of your control. Inward is all about your control. So example for Kay, can she control going to yoga? Absolutely she can. So that's what her internal self is saying. Go to yoga, Kay. Can you do that, Kay? I can very easily actually <laughs> and it's a simple thing to do right so pay success and your success as a viewer or listener is simple and it's so not what most people are teaching people out there they're all about the rah-rah and the hype and the hustle and you got to go 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 23 hours a day and sleep for an hour and it's bullshit you have to tune inward get an alignment with your true self and listen to the insight and take action on the one step that comes forward. And that's exactly, as I mentioned earlier, what our meditations will guide you through, what our coaching will guide you through, and what you will guide you through. Amazing. And I love the analogy as well about the stepping stones. You know, everything's not a straight line. You know, it can be a stepping stone to the left, a stepping stone to the right, and then you finally meet, right, you get to your destination. But these stones or these points can be very random, like going to yoga or going or going visiting your mum or something like this. It just means that it just whatever's holding that tension for you will then help will then help you in the other areas of your life. So we might not see that that path, the path is. Let's say we might not think, OK, this path doesn't make sense, but actually it makes perfect sense in the internal world. Well, also too, Kay, the path makes perfect sense once you reach your destination and look backwards. But if you're trying to gauge your path from the start, you can't. You cannot sit down, and this is why I find business planning really, uh, you know, there's so much advice on business planning is plan it out before you start. Why would you do that? You don't know what you don't know at that point. But what you do know is to tune inward and listen to the one thing or a couple of things that it's saying that I think you should do. So to me, the best business plan is the internal one, not the one where you think you have to do. Because I talked about that, as I've talked about many times, I used to have to-do lists of two, 300 things to do, what I thought I had to do. And then my intuition was saying, go and have fun. 
go and play golf and then that'll get your TV show on the, on the TV. And my head part goes, how the hell is that going to work? But I did, and it did get on TV very quickly after, and it had nothing to do with the to-do list. So that's why I keep, and I'll harp on this for the rest of my life, that our best to-do list and our best business plan is on the inside, and as is when we take action on those impulses or intuitions that we get. Amazing. So I'm really excited for the viewers that they listen to this and to do the, the strategy and the meditations. Um, and maybe, maybe they could let us know as well if uh, anyone does these meditations, what comes up for them, and they can share it with us on our group or our Facebook page. That would be amazing. It would really love to hear from them too. Um, I think that that's all from my side, Andrew. Is that anything else that you wanted to wrap up with? No, I think, again, in summary, like with Joe's uh, episode, simple, four key points, and but that's life, right? The simplest and most effective way for you to get to success Take one step at a time and keep it simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Amazing. So please, guys, like like and share this podcast. If you've enjoyed it, share with your friends and family and hopefully they can find some value from it too. And also you can join our Facebook and Instagram and our other uh, YouTube pages. All the links are going to be in the show notes. Um, so we'd love to connect with you. And I'm looking forward to the next podcast in two weeks, Andrew. Look forward to it, Kay. We'll see you then. All right. Take care. Have a great time, everyone. Bye-bye.